Course in Miracles came into my life, I remember being at the University of Cincinnati for 10 years and going over to Burnett Woods and walking through there and pondering, what's it all about? What's it all about? Healthy? This pondering, pondering, you know. Uh, instead of, do you know the way to San Jose, it's like, do you know the way to the Kingdom of Heaven? I've been away too long. You know, it's like, it's really praying, praying, and opening, and opening, and, and talking to God, talking to Spirit, but really, I had to start to ask some pretty interesting questions, like, I was in the university for 10 years, so I started to look at, what is my motive for being a full-time student? What is this for? Am I trying to escape something? Am I, do I believe that much in education <laughs> that I would spend all that money? Well, what's the point well, of the degrees? Really, you know, and I would kind of say, well, actually, I think the degrees can be kind of helpful in this world for getting better jobs, you know, instead of just flipping burgers at McDonald's or something, Jesus, it's, you can get a little bit better job, you can pull in some of the big bucks. And then Jesus was like, okay, very good, then what's the purpose of pulling in the big bucks? What exactly are you after there with the big bucks? And I was like, well, then I had to really get honest with that and take it down a little further. And it was like, well, actually, um, actually I want a relationship. And when you're really poor, it's just, and this planet is not actually the most ideal, it's not, it's not the most ideal position to be in, you know. You out on the first date, who's paying? <laughs> Oh boy, it might not be a second date on that one. So I gave Jesus my criteria and everything, so it's like, oh. So you're spending all this time in university to get these degrees, so you can get a better job and a career, so you can get a relationship. Hmm, that's interesting. You know, when you're trying to explain the motives to Jesus, and he's like, you really believe you would starve unless you had stacks of green paper strips and piles of metal discs. You really believe a sharpened needle pushed through your veins would ward off disease. All right, all right, all right. I believe in that. You know, being liked, knowing the right people, an endless list of nothingness take you inward and say, what do you believe? And start to realize that the things that you believe are sustaining you, you're putting a lot of care and effort and energy into. And he's just saying, well, you're just looking for salvation in the wrong place. You know, you're, you're misinvesting the power of your mind. And it's not going to bring you what you think it's going to bring you. It's just like a figment of your imagination. And you may have lots of evidence in this dream world that it will bring you something. You say, well, it's working over there for Fred, and it's working for Sally. I think it could work for me. And he's like, mm, mm, mm. It may look like from the outside it's working for Fred and Sally, but it ain't working for Fred and Sally either. You know, and it's not working for this country or that country, and it's just not working. So it, it's a convincing. You know, we really have to be convinced. We have to learn from consequences. And because there's pleasure and pain for, for the ego, and they seem very different too, just like the past and future seem different, pleasure and pain seem different. So it's, it's pretty tricky when you try to maximize <coughs> the pleasure and minimize the pain, and they're the same. It's insane. It's really insane. So. It's part of the learning, it's part of unlearning these tricks, letting go of these a, a retranslation these tricks. So, you know, you start to just get honest with yourself, like, what is this really bringing me? Sometimes we do things repeatedly, over and over and over, for years, and then at some point we pause to reflect, like, well, what was that really all about? It could be with children, it could be with houses, cars. Some of us have had a lot of different cars. And at some point, we start to go, hmm, what was that all about? 
It seemed cool at the time, but it's a lot of work for these metal things with this rubber on, you know, it's like, that's, God, that's a lot of work. But, you know, and changing the oil and new tires and da 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 da, -da. But, you know, it seemed like a good idea at the time. <laughs> You know, the more, I guess if you're identified with the body and you like mobility of the body, then, you know, and maybe just like with the clothes, you know, a little bit of style and, you know, you go through whatever, the Corvette to the Cougar. I, these are the kind of lessons I had. I mean, I, I remember the first car that I seemed to have was given to me by the family. It was a, it was a blue station wagon. You know, when you're a teenager and you get a, a blue station wagon and you just, you, know, you, you drive it, but actually, you know, your face is kind of like, and then, you know, you're... With wooden panels? Luckily not, in my case. But I looked at those with the wood panels and I'd go, oh God, please. Say thank you for saving me from that. But then you go around, but actually it was interesting because I remember that the make was a Mercury and it was interesting, the model was a Voyager. My first car was a Voyager. And I had some Voyages coming, Holy Spirit's like, oh you got some Voyages coming here. So, but anyway, it finally, after I put up with that for a couple years, you gotta take your sister to the mall, and you know, it's just, it's just people pleasing. You know, you can't, you just feel like, oh man, you're, you're part of this crazy family and you're in this blue station wagon taking your sister to the mall. But finally, you do finally get to that point where you save all your money, you know, with your job and everything. So then, when I could seemingly decide, I've got a Cougar XR7, you know, with the, the the turn signal, you know, the, yeah. isn't that cool? <laughs> Boy, the Dawn was the station wagon. That was the cool. I used to take it out to the to the bank, to the to the mall, and people would then the, get compliments in the parking lot. I'd say, man, that is a cool car. It was a, it was a strong reflection of the self concept, you know, building a self concept, and then. I remember one day I was coming up from the, toward the University of Cincinnati, I had a couple of classmates in the car, and I was, I was waiting for another car which had stopped to turn, and I looked in my rear view mirror, and this car was coming behind me at a very high rate of speed, and it wasn't slowing down, so my eyes, balls got really big, and I, I hit my foot on the brake already, but I pressed down and braced, and wham, my Cougar XR7. <laughs> got hit with those cute turn signals everywhere. It, right there in the back where the turn signals were, it just was ran probably about 30 to 35 miles an hour. I mean it was plow it was total. It, it bent the frame and everything. I tried to repair it, there was no hope. And then I the insurance, I couldn't believe how, what a small, it was a, an older model that I fixed up, so, but the, the paltry little uh, check that came from the insurance, that all I could afford was an AMC Gremlin. I went. Which, hey, that's right. I felt really coerced. That's all I could. It was close to a pacer. It was close to a pacer. It was an AFC Gremlin. And it was yellow. It was a yellow AFC Gremlin. And it, had these, and it had these black stripes, you know, like those old, you know, like those lamb chop kind of uh, cybers. It had these like lamb chop black stripes. It was hideous. But I was into I was into the course. This was at the beginning of the course, and I remember going in and talking to my counselor. I was just in grief over this whole thing, and 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 then one day I was working with the course, and then, and Jesus, the light bulb went off, 
that how I was in, so invested, my self-concept was so invested in that Cougar XR7, that this was actually a blessing. You know, you can't judge your advances from your retreats. This was actually an advance of me learning to live with a gremlin. <laughs> Even the sound of it, it's like, it's living. Station wagon was just warming me up for the gremlin. And then, which I felt was thrust upon me, and I had to deal with it. So, so actually you can see how from a Course perspective, that was a, a step up in spirituality. But when I tried to explain this to my counselor, his last name was actually Church, in Church. He just looked at me with, with this incredulous look, like, you're crazy. I was trying to explain how wonderful it was that I ended up with the gremlin. And he was just shaking his head going, no, you should be sad. You should really be in grief. <laughs> and I, then it dawned on me that, oh, he doesn't see it. So it was another great advance. Sometimes when we have these great spiritual insights, we can't speak them and convey them to anybody else. You know, it was just for me, which was a huge insight. It was just for me. Don't try to explain this to anybody, just be grateful, feel blessed. So, so anyway, that's, that's just how life goes. It seems like sometimes things are being taken away from you, but it's just that the ego believed it had some things that it never really had. You can never really have things. We've got that Elisa Moore song, only an instant does this world endure. And it's, it's like, even the joys, it says, are, are gone before they can be possessed or, or even grasped. <coughs> that everything we think is valuable in this world is just so fleeting and so transitory. And we never can possess it, because we weren't created to possess, we were created to extend and shine, and radiate, and share, but we weren't created to possess. Possess people, possess houses, cars, possess bodies. We really were not created to possess. And so, the ego is based on possession, and it, that's where all the sadness comes in. When we are identified with the ego, and we think we're, we're losing things. You know, losing, oh, the body's growing old. Bodies are just images, they don't really grow old. It's just like when you project time onto an image, then you can make the illusion of aging, but it's not, it's not a reality. Spirit doesn't grow old. So it's just, it's good when she start to get a hold of these dynamics, she start to realize, huh, I've got nothing to worry about. You, you can't really get sick. You can't really grow old, you can't really die. It's absolutely impossible, and the more you start to just open yourself to that, then it's really cool. You can actually relax and have some fun, you know, without taking things so seriously. Sing, sing a song, make it simple to last your whole life long. Don't worry that it's not good enough for anyone else to hear. Just sing, sing a song. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>